it's a matter of opinion or semantics, whatever you might want to call it, that if you have a bed and breakfast, there's nothing that says you have to advertise it by saying bed and breakfast. That doesn't mean it's not a bed and breakfast. It's a bed and breakfast because they went and got this special use permit, they got a license, they pay a fee, and therefore it's a bed and breakfast. Now, one of the comments was, well, it's not being used as a bed and breakfast. I said, that's a different issue. Just because it's advertised as something different doesn't mean it's not. It, it could be being used correctly. We don't know that. So the question was, is it being used as the definition of a bed and breakfast, which is owner occupied? That's what it says in our code of bed and breakfast is. So that's more of the issue that code enforcement has to make sure is adhered to rather than how it's promoted and advertised. Agreed. So that, Bill said okay with that. He, he didn't have a problem with that. So, so it is owner occupied? Pardon me? It is owner occupied? It, it, it yeah. is designated as owner occupied, yes. Yeah. yeah. Advertisement, we won't get into that. It's they can advertise it however they yeah. want. So, so what's the direction to the, to the, to the Code of I, I Lay off 917 North Colony? Well, I, it's, it's a non-issue. Yeah, he mentioned the fact that they believe at times it's not owner-occupied. And I said, well, then that's something that you have to have try to, to <coughs> deal with and, and figure way. out. That's all. That sounds right. And so, so, to, and so they're, on, they're good with that. So the special use permit has to be approved by the town board? Mm -hmm. Does anyone, I'll entertain a motion, motion to approve the special use permit? Well, no, no. No. Oh, I don't think that there's two. There's a special use permit and the license. The license was not issued. That's what. So how do we get that license issued? With the directive that you were talking today about, right? Is there an application pending? Mm -hmm. I don't. We, we don't have an application for license. Clearly, it's a yearly use for bed and breakfast. 
that is breakfast is, is a special use. And then they, a license. You have to get a special use permit for a bed and breakfast. And, and then, then there's an a license. license and a fee that goes with they're it. They're not necessarily concurrent. They're, they're, with they're separate, but they're kind of together. Can you tell board chair if I ask yeah. Mr. Wallace a question? Mm -hmm. Mr. Wallace, where are you in the process? What was denied to you by the... There, I have a special, special permit. I got that in 2005, and it's been approved every year. Now, in 2013, for some reason, I was given a second license with a second fee, and I have to get that license also, and that's the one we're talking about here. Is that for a different property? What's that? Is that for this 917? Yes, 917. It's for a bed and breakfast, and I have been owner-occupied since 1995. Right. I've lived in the house. It's my residence. Uh, I've got all kinds of so, services So it's a here. license issue? It's a license. I don't yeah. remember when your special use permit. Do you know when your renewal is for the special use permit? Is? Special permit is in March. In March. This we one have not addressed that. It was the license that goes January 1st through December 1st. That's right. Right. And that's not or a December 31st. That's not a separate fee, but that still is. Oh, it is a separate fee. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's not very much. It's, I forget what it is, but it's, it's, probably, it's probably in our, in our fee schedule. But we probably can't do that right now. We need to, it, It's going to take a few days for us to figure it out. Wouldn't it make sense for the license and the special use to run concurrently and not have the special use run from March to March and the license run from January to January? Yep. Yeah. We should make that change however we can make that change. Yeah, it makes sense. I don't so think that's hard to do. Peter could probably tell us whether that's a... No, it's doable. It's doable. It's the, 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 the license, they're just separate sections. I mean, you're, you're, you're right. They're just separate sections. Kind of put one thing in the zoning to, to have a special use permit license that's required to operate a and b uh, other than that both so you can certainly issue a license for a period that's you know, for both so they're both terminus and mm -hmm. you know on the same schedule for respectively i don't know how these ended up on different planes at some point in the past because probably because our, 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 our license fees are yearly yeah. right. our license fees are january 1st to december 31st and the special use isn't right. necessarily not everybody that has a license like for motel campgrounds has a special use permit right. so Two separate, two separate uh, things. So that's why the dates are, right. are different. So is there action we need to take that we can take today to help alleviate the situation that he's facing? Well, the question is, what's on the agenda to act on? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Um, so let me talk to the code enforcement guy tomorrow and tell them what we've talk, discussed is important, and see if I can just alleviate it. Well, no, we're yeah, we're they're sure. fine. They're fine with it. I think what we're discussing is that if we need a license. Mr. Wallace needs a license, we just need to get a license, that's all. All right. There's no vote for that, though. No. no. Okay. okay, just, just comes from code enforcement. That's Mr. Wallace, true. do you understand? Yeah, um, just need a license to renew with your mother. Uh, Bill Shaw denied my license, so exactly. I need that to be approved. So, so I will talk to Mr. Shaw tomorrow that we talked about this, that you, that you live there and you reside there, mm -hmm. and unless there's evidence to the contrary, which we don't know about, the license should be issued. Yes. It, right. There's also an ability to appeal that determination to the ZBA if you get a determination of the, uh, the code enforcement officer that you're unhappy with. Actually, so. it says the town board. It says yeah. code enforcement and town board. In yeah, the yeah, under the state law, you can always appeal it to the ZBA. They're not denying the special but use. They're denying, denying the, the permit. permit. So they, that's not an issue. Right, right. That's not, that doesn't right. go to the... Right. In code 354, it does state code enforcement officer and town board, so it says it has both. And then uh, Bill Shaw also sent me an email saying that I would have a public hearing in front of the town board, so that was confusing. You know, I, I think he was mistaken on that mm -hmm. after my conversation with him. He, he was under the impression that because it was being advertised differently that that caused a problem, and, uh -huh. and that was what the impetus for sending that out was. Mm -hmm. And after our discussion, he didn't necessarily agree, but he agreed that we could go forward with it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, so he would just issue the license then. Pardon me? He would just go ahead and issue the license. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just something he gives to, you know, he gives to Karen, and Karen then sends him the certificate that he wants that license. Right. Okay, so we should be able to take care of that. Either they can take care of it or I can take care of it tomorrow, so we'll decide which one. We'll work that out between he and I. Okay. Um, just looking for Nate for a moment. 
Uh, special use permit, uh, car dealership, Beverly. Yes, I can deal with that. Just to clarify, um, it's still, the site plan is still needed to be revised and resubmitted. The submittal was made to the current plan on 12 14 2016 and requires 30 days for comment. So we had uh, referred it to the town board and closed the public hearing. Um, so we would be able to actually vote on this uh, not before 1 16. Correct. On our 17th. 17th. Seventeen. Right, yeah. That's, yeah. that's when we'll take care of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we gotta wait for the county to come back in. Right. Yeah. yeah. We all got a, a, a mailing from. Next meeting on a Monday or Tuesday? Tuesday. 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 It's Martin Tuesday. Luther King Day on Monday. Uh, that's why. Oh, was it again? Yeah. How was it? Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday. Was Second Monday. Uh, the first Monday. Monday. Tuesday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The um. We all got a, a letter from um, the law firm yeah. saying that it's all squared away and it's just a it's just a reapproval. I mean, yeah, we need a resolution to reapprove the final plat yeah, we uh, don't. for Gun Creek. Uh, Bob has explained it is basically a reapproval of something yeah. that has already been done. Right. So I, I can make a motion for that. I'll second that. Motion made. Any comments? All in favor? when I talked to Bob this afternoon about it, and I think he's talked to other people also, it's just taking the building and moving it, I guess you would say south, and it would actually end up being now attached or placed right next to the main warehouse building that's um, proposed to be constructed. Um, they have the information, their engineering department says actually nothing's really changed, it's just going from here to there, and that's that. And it's gotten a little bit bigger, and the warehouse has gotten a little bit smaller. So there's really nothing, they had some drainage issues, but they're working on those drainage issues. And then, um, the drainage issues actually came from Holiday Inn. Right, yeah, he, he sees no reason for it to have to go through the whole process and back to the planning board and everything else. Well, but I'm pretty sure this board is interested in expediting things so that there's no roadblocks. Oh, that makes sense. That we know that once we got it for you, that's that the preconditions mm -hmm. for approval. So yeah. The minor is just yeah. about it. No, Tim's first. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's my uh, We need a, a, a res <coughs> we need a resolution to approve the site plan modifications and reapprove for 101 uh, White Haven. And this is With no other property. With yeah. conditions. Yeah. Outdate storage buildings, yeah. trailers, um, in the area identified in phase two can only be only can happen after obtaining a, a certificate of occupancy uh, for phase one outdoor storage of trailers shown along east side of the plan must be in approval uh, surface and approved site uh, grade and pavement identify the limits of the storage areas are um, town code requires a paved surface for areas um, available to the public with the building being pushed south along the original location. The area in front of the building uh, needs to be paved. Uh, final grade and drainage uh, plan must be submitted to the engineering department for review. So that's a motion. Oh. Is that the motion? That's the motion. Okay. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you need okay. to pick this one up? Yeah, sure. Which one? Did we talk about Mr. Maloney's property? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, thank that. you for doing that. I'm gonna say, I want to say, because there's people watching as well, let's not give him an excuse not to build it. To delay it further. Okay. All right. Um, school resource officer. So I spoke to Brian at the, at the schools. Um, and he talked about the need of the school resource officer. It's been, I guess, batted around between the town and the schools for years. But the, the question's about cost, I guess. Uh, he's willing to pick up the cost. Really? Yeah. 
And he gave me, well, he, he said, that we, we found another town that does it that way. And he, he gave me a contract showing that. Well, why do we need to get an officer? Well, we're just it's one of our. The oh, officer, it has to be an more. officer that's able to carry a, a weapon. So and the only way you do that is to have a part of a police force. So we make him part of our force. So he's part of our force, but he's technically serving in schools. Oh, so it's a, 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 not a current person. It's a different person. No, exactly. They found a re- school they, resource officer. They there's wanted. a candidate they like, okay. exactly. I get it. They think he could do it. And I said, it's fine. We'll have to go through the regular process of interviewing or however it's required to do it by law. However, and then we hire him because that way he can carry a, a gun. Mm-hmm. And that way he can be at the schools. But they pick up the cost. They and reimburse and So we have a draft contract. Every, uh-huh. quarter, every quarter they reimburse you. Uh-huh. So what about liability? You picked it up. Yeah, so let's. So we we then charge them back on the quarter. Right. So it's it's basically we can take some liability for it, and it be, but it but I think given what they're willing to do, I think it's a good have good point. Change our insurance. I think it's all stuff I have to figure out. I just want permission from you guys to go before I go any further and negotiate a contract with them. I'll get a contract paper. And Peter, I have a draft contract I found from another jurisdiction that I can provide to you. Um, that we can get going. I just don't want to go any further unless there's some, something some I don't know about. The additional insurance cost to them as well if they get killed? We can try. I mean, well, I mean they're, they're willing to pick up those expenses, right? Right. So yeah. ideally it would be pay benefits and it would be 12 months even regardless of... Yep. Yep. I think all that is up to the negotiation, though. But basically the concept is they bear the burden of the most of the costs. However, we do have some... You know, okay. connected burdens, which are, you know, regarding risk and liability. So, well, those are big burdens, though. So yeah. You can't just say. But it, it's been done this way by other jurisdictions. That would be the most exposure we would have with all of our police force, probably, because of the number of. And the wild stuff that can happen. I get it. Well, especially in a high school. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Like, well, that's why they I'm need not against it. I just think we need to look at some of those issues. No, this is not this is not a proposal to sign a doc- document. I just want to start the discussion and take it to the next step. And before I do that, I wanted to p- say I'm doing it. Before we sign anything, you guys have a full look at the documentation. I want to work with Peter on the documentation. I have contracts in other places that have done it similarly. So unless you guys do other schools handle the liability, I guess. Are they hired by the county? Yes. This this is done. This has been done by other jurisdictions, even locally. So well, one that I found. I should. Be more specific. I, I think this is probably a good idea. We've talked about this in the past on numerous occasions I'm with the town board, board or with the school board when we've had our joint discussions and things like that. I think this is an important thing for our community. And if we can if we can generally absorb this without having a tremendous increase, and I don't think it's gonna be I got a feeling that because of our, our insurance, the way our insurance is set up, every time we all end up asking a question, is that covered? They end up coming back, yeah, you've got this big umbrella type thing where you're covered for this and this and that and that. Mm-hmm. It may be a little bit different here in the fact that this will be a full-time officer and we don't have one as one of those, so maybe that's going to be a little different. So but we, yeah. the research of it, I don't have a problem with the research of it. So we're, we're at this level. Yeah. I just want to make sure conceptually, mm-hmm. is there some hiccup you guys saw before why it didn't work? And then if it's okay, I'm going to go forward yeah. and when I get more details, I'll give it to you. So just real quick, uh, full-time? It would be a full-time position? Yeah, we don't know yet. I, mean, I wonder if that has any be, impact on anything. I think it, I think it's something we can get to, and I think there's an indefinite need there, and I think that they want to do it. Well, then we should probably try to figure it out. Right. If we okay. can figure it out, great. If we can't figure it out, well, yeah. that's unfortunate. So, Peter, you and I will figure it out. We'll come back with a more specific plan. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, are there any objections? So, what I want to do, so we have some proposals for costs for master plan. Now, as you know, I'm a big supporter of having a master plan. I think it will help us avoid a lot of problems in the future. Um, and other towns that have done them recently have had great success getting grant money and getting projects off the ground, especially in Lanesville. So I want to refer the three proposals. We, the Long Range Planning Committee put out for proposals. I want to let them interview the parties and give us recommendations, unless there's an objection to that process. So at the lo- Long Range Planning, as we remember in the beginning of the year, it's not partisan. It's Jim's on it. Jim's running it pretty much, but it's there's a lot of diverse voices on there. Mm-hmm. So I think they can give us an opinion of what these plans look like and then give us their recommendations. Do you care if I go forward like that? The board wasn't invited to attend all of it. Sure, of course. Yeah, I, I, 
think it's it's probably logical that the, the people who are going to be working with uh, the people that are going to be guiding them are comfortable with the selection. Right. So do you mind if I proceed in that manner? Okay. All right. I'm proceed that way. Just tell them to go ahead. Um, set we need to set dates for interviews for the advisory board openings for parks and rec and conservation. Um, go ahead. We need to, I don't know if there's any other openings or not mm -hmm. in the rest of our boards. Um, I, I think the process this year must have been different because in the past we have been asked as liaisons to find out if the people that are uh, up are interested in coming back. And I guess that must have been done through the office or whatever. I, did, I made all those calls. I okay. didn't know I was supposed to ask No, no, no. no it, it, I, next it, time, you next year I'll ask you. No, you don't have to ask us. It's okay. fine that you don't ask. Me. If you want, <laughs> if you want to send that email out or that phone call, and it comes from the supervisor's office finding out instead of going from here to here to mm -hmm. there, that's okay with me. I don't have a problem with that. So, it's it's hard. Hard. so but I don't. Like I just don't know what other kind of openings might exist. So we might have to, we might have to advertise. The other thing that I got uh, in a conversation with Diane Evans was, we had already had three people apply for the Conservation Advisory Board. And we already had have, have interviewed one of the ladies. We did that earlier yeah. last year. So we're wondering about the process involved as an example. Let's say we start the new year like this. And somebody three weeks from now says, you know, I'm kind of interested in serving on the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Well, thank you very much for your, uh, in your interest. But right now, we don't have any openings. We will put your name in the file, and we will save it. So the next time there's an opening, we don't have to advertise. We have a person in the file. We can ask that person if they're interested. If they're interested, we can bring them in, make sure the interview's OK. They're not like crazy or something like that. I don't know. Most of the time, we just say OK. Sometimes you have multiple people to choose from. So should we be retaining a bunch of names in folders and if we have those people we just yes go ahead I think yes I do retain in the names okay so here's the, here's, the, here's the just, a, just a letter I of spoke, interest spoke, that's all we'd yeah. be retaining I spoke to yeah. Diane as well or I, I saw the conversation so she she basically made a really good point this one woman she was like I just got interviewed a few months ago right. do I have to do this all again right which is what the point is I, I think yeah. you're getting at because I think you're right I think if we already have somebody interviewed just six months ago why go through the whole day of spending interviews again? Right. It's, it's but I think there is, I mean, there is that process. It's one thing if somebody quits in the middle of a term and you want to fill it and you have that person on file, but when you do your reorg, you know, and then I think typically that person's name is in file, but I still think it's good to put that out there to see if anybody else wants to interview for an open position as well. You know, that's just my thought. On that, I don't see. I, I actually don't see anything wrong with that. I think. I know. It, it, it kind I mean, of, a lot of times we don't have any interest at all. So if yeah. that person is, you know, you don't have to re-interview them if we've all been there. Right. Let's not make okay. people's life miserable, though. If they've gone through it and they obviously want to be on it, they're obviously. Yeah, I don't think that's. It, it, but we may have a problem with this particular lady because she's on the long-range planning committee. Uh, she has other commitments, so she may be able to say yes. I will serve on that board, or she may be able, she might have to say no. I can't. I mean, if it meets on Thursdays right now, and she's not available on Thursdays, right. so that's a problem there. But I see what Bev's saying is that maybe we want to put it out to the public to let them know that there is an opening, so that right. people that are thinking about mm -hmm. wanting to serve don't think that well, the board's already filled. What's the right. sense of me putting my letter of interest in because of, if there's right. no openings? I think you have to legally. It was a paid position, would. I, I don't know about volunteering. Going but, but maybe it makes sense to, to accumulate what you accumulate, mm -hmm. Cindy, mm -hmm. in probably November. That's pretty, people should know whether they're coming back in November. And then we could advertise in December, get a list of names, and figure it out, and then have them appointed for the reorg. Yeah, why don't we do this? Why don't we advertise That's this? If there's idea. no response, or in a period of time, we say, you know, X person well, is that's added what to the list. Yeah, you have a How about sometimes, if, if that person just doesn't 
tip the bell, you better off leaving it open until yeah. someone comes along. I don't necessarily disagree with that. Right? Yeah. So you want an ad in the dispatch on Friday. Oh, we could do it on the website, too. The new website. website. And then, so two weeks, and then you guys just... Well, it's not imperative that you that you get somebody on right away. The Conservation Advisory Board would like to get their people there. there there's people in the Boulder, plus a couple other people that have expressed some interest. They would like to get people appointed because they're two people short, and they would like to get some projects on right. kids going and stuff like that. So... Um, and I don't know if there's interest for Parks and Recreation or not. Do you have any names in it? No, but no. it hasn't been advertised. Yeah, well, so we'd have to add. So we'd like to. Well, we received one from Mrs. Schubert. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That was right. two months ago, so we do have one now. Right. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. know if one ever went away, but she was waiting for the advertisement. Okay, well, we could put that advertisement How about we just advertise it and look for the openings, and then if someone says to us, hey, I just interviewed, then we take that into account. Mm -hmm. like, like this situation, there's no one, we know who this woman is. We know what her issues are. We know what her strengths are. Yeah. We don't need to interview her again. No, and I, th I think if she, we were, we were willing to appoint her, but there were other people that we put there instead. Um, I think if she's willing to serve, I think she should be appointed. We don't have to do it tonight. We can do yeah. it next no, Monday. I agree. I agree. And then the, and then the additional opening we can do after we've interviewed some people. Do we have a list? Okay. All three of four members of that board. No. Yeah, I, I really do think that was one of the things I wanted to talk about too today uh, we were talking about appointments I think it's a good idea to have an alternate or two for each board because of people going away for uh, winter and whatnot so that these boards always have a quorum it is weird and sometimes you go to these meetings there'd be two people there sometimes you go to be trapped mm -hmm. it's weird like I, well I, one of the important things is like if you take a few of the boards that are really really meaningful and that's not to say that other boards aren't. That's what that's not what I mean by that statement. That looks bad now. <laughs> <laughs> One, ones that require a vote to do something, like the planning board, like the architecture review board, and if they don't get the vote, people are people's projects are Wait, delayed a month. Oh, so you mean like the meaningful board? No. <laughs> that's that's just reiterate. Really that's like, thank thank you. Right. Right. I appreciate so that very much. Dave Bruno is <laughs> going to be the alternate. Yeah. Yes. And he's been at the table a lot. Right. Because it's not just a particular person that's there. It's multiple people yeah. might be out at different times, and that way business goes forward and, right. and plans aren't held up. It, it's, it's funny. He brought that up in, in my conversation with Bob this afternoon. He grabbed me and brought me in here and was talking about the uh, marine issue and stuff like that, and he talked about the planning board. And he said, you know, would you guys even consider a second alternate? He said, because that would bring another person in because there are times when there are two people missing from the planning board and it would be helpful to have that other and he thought also and I agree with him on this that when they're sitting around the table just because the alternate isn't going to vote that day doesn't mean doesn't mean they don't participate in the discussion exactly. because they must have reviewed all the material because they may have had to vote that evening not yes. knowing until they showed up at the meeting so exactly. their input into that discussion I think would be important we, we added two alternatives you, alternates two? to cable and oh, communication. To yeah. So well, that's because you have a bunch of really It's good been people. really important because, it, like you say, in the holidays, winter, mm -hmm. one or two people are gone, and then you, you either don't have a quorum or you, and you can't move forward on projects. Yeah. So right. I, don't, I think it's a good idea to have one or two alternates for every board. Tell you the truth. Yeah. Don't you, okay, guys, this is our because they're all volunteers. Taboo subject. Don't you think some of these terms are way too long? Seven years? Do you do you ever want to redress address that and start thinking about making it shorter for some of these? The question would could that I would have on that is that statutory. Yeah, oh, is that though. no? Or if they're long terms like that, exactly. term limits, like if seven year terms, maybe two years is terms is plenty for I mean, in some ways it's great that someone wants to serve for 21 years and volunteer in other ways it's like wait a second someone wants to serve 21 years as a volunteer i mean i don't know i i think so. i think five-year terms or four-year terms would make more sense to well, get more people involved. Five years. i would do shorter terms with no term limits for this because it's volunteer and that way you could have more of a mix and more of a change and you know, the, the problem you have now is, you know, when some of these people drop out for whatever reason, 
you don't have a deep bench in the town because no one has the experience because these things have been locked up for 25 years. Right. So, you, you know, I don't know who's going to fill it. For example, zoning board of appeals. It's hard to find someone who can even do it, that has the know-how to do it, and you can't, because it's hard to get junior members in or people that have done it before or even understand it. I, I don't know. It's something to think about. That's why I think alternates are important. Okay. I would, I, listen, I'm all for alternates. More people on the board. If someone wants to be an alternate on one of these boards, God bless them. <laughs> okay, so get, getting back to this, uh, specifically the Conservation Advisory Board, what we could do is, if, if Mrs. Osgood is interested, we could have her on the agenda for the 17th to appoint her, because we've already done the interview. Okay. And then for the other people, after the advertisement comes in, goes out, I mean, and we get the responses, then we could set up interviews and then end up filling the other spot. And if, if we want to, we could also do it an alternate. Mm -hmm. I see that's good. Is that, does everyone agree with that? Yeah. Cindy, you got that? So, yeah, so an ad for two weeks and then set up the interviews in three weeks. Yes. Right. Yeah, so you get appointed yeah. the first week in February. I mean, we'll, call, right. we'll call Ms. Ozzie. We'll miss one meeting. That's done. Yeah, I'm all okay. for an alternate. Okay. Yeah. All right, with that, Make a motion to move into executive session. Uh, just before you do that. Yep. Oh, I well, workshops. Huh? Last year, for like the last quarter, you scheduled workshops every Monday at one hour. Mm -hmm. uh, is that going to continue? I like it. Yep. Okay, so it next Monday is planning board, so if we're going to meet, we'd only be for 45 minutes. That's all right. An hour. Then the next week is um, meeting, but there's a fifth Monday, and that's typically, which we did mm -hmm. not do in 16, is the school town board. Are you not going to schedule a school town board? Let me call, let me talk to them. I think we should. That would be the fifth Monday. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's Nate. do it if we have something to talk about. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nate, you said what? that what didn't work. That date didn't work. Okay. Let, can, can I give you? Can I update you on this next Tuesday? All right. I can't remember but why this. Was so you're gonna be right. next Monday. Yep. On the ninth. No, not the ninth. The next Monday is next Monday. It's that's, next. Okay, it's good. That's, but that's okay. the planning board. So we'll meet next Monday for a short meeting on the okay. ninth, and then we have our regular meeting, and then another the twenty third, and then the thirtieth. That's could fine. Potentially be the fifth. Do you guys want to cancel next meeting? Next Monday more meeting? Or we start at five. Or we start earlier. Why don't we? Why don't we say we're going to have it and Let's see what we come see what's up? up? Let's say yeah. five o'clock. And then if, and then if it's not nothing. all that much, we that can good. Well, just go. I've already got some stuff on the agenda, so okay. you'll, you'll have enough to talk about. So, we already had so, right. so Monday the 9th, and, but you're going to meet at 5 instead of 6? Yep. All right. Okay, yeah. right? That sounds five. good. I have one more thing. Oh, I have five. a couple things. Yes, but sir. Oh, just just one more go ahead, Pat. I'm sorry. That's all right. The no. Association of Towns meets their delegates by the first meeting in February, which means one of the committees, um, you'll need one or two delegates. Who wants to go? to go to New York and then... Uh, so we can submit this resolution um, by the by that meeting. So, like, I'd have it on in two weeks. But it's going to stay till Wednesday to vote. So this year I'll go. Unless you guys object, I'd like to go this year. You ought to go. Anyone else want to go? Hey, G hey. Uh, i got to check the date. What, what is the date? It's the 19th through the 20th. It's Sunday the 19th through the 22nd. Hey, Mike, I'll go with you. It'd be like a really good cop movie. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, okay. Wednesday is the meeting. So somebody has January, to say, right? No, February. Yeah. Usually, it's two council that go. Right. Yeah. So and I and you and I went last we year. Went last so it would be it would be Mike and Chris's. I'm going to come back to life. <laughs> yeah. Are you going? No, I'm not because I would love to go again. Do you want to go again? Hit some, unless you want to go. I, I, know I might not. Nah, make it a little no, you know what? I was, go, I was planning on going. Go ahead. No, I don't need to go. I looked at the agenda, and I'm not all that impressed with the agenda. No? No. Um, so, well, I like to go because I like to go. But when is the date? So I, it's I mean, it's Sunday the 19th. It doesn't have to be the same hey, today because there will be a resolution in no, okay. February. 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 Yeah, let's we'll we'll go. Meet Sunday, Sunday and, I will go. and somebody would have to stay through Wednesday morning for the meeting. That would be the delegate. Okay, you, right. Her and, and I will go all stay through. Okay. Nate's going and then you guys can decide. And then, and then Mike, else. Mike, if you're going to go, that's fine. If you're not going to go, I might consider going. So right. just let me know what your schedule is. Right. And it, it really is good. There's a lot of things that are repeated. That's why when I looked at the agenda, I went, oh, I don't think it's 
and I'm trying to look for new things. And like there's a new one here and there's a new one here. Other than that, um, you know, contract negotiations, I've gone through that before. I'm going to have to check my schedule because they have some appointments going on. So I'll check. Okay, just let me know if you're not going to I'll put it on the agenda for next week, and then if they can't decide, then by the 17th. And one of the things you want to do. going to be a resolution. One of the things you want to do fairly quickly is if you are going, Get on the web. Get on the. the oh, you have to do your, your flight. Oh, yeah. Flights like your flight. Yeah. yeah, because they're really kind of inexpensive right yeah. now. Because I was looking at them the other day. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. And um, hotel wise, apparently, I didn't see anything where they were offering a deal to delegates. Yeah, they, are. they are. Is it only in the book? Because it's not on the website. The delegates. I don't mean the delegates. The attendees. I'm sorry, the attendees. They moved this year. They're, they're not at they're the, the Marriott Marquis, yeah. aren't they? They're at the Marriott. That's the second year in a row. Right. It's all here. It's all right. It's not on the website. The no, you have to go to, you have to book your own room now. You have to do it differently. It's different this year. Oh, you well, have to book, you your, have own book your own room. Which means you don't have to stay there. You oh, can you stay can anywhere you want. Yeah. You stay at a vacation home. Where were we last year? <laughs> <laughs> it was at the Marriott Marquis last year. <laughs> it's it's going going to to it is it nice to stay to there. Built. You don't have to go outside if it's right. raining or snowing or something like that. You know, yeah. I stayed down the street at a courtyard you instead. Don't have to pack it. I have to, they get it sent every day. Right. Right. Yeah, I was looking to save the town money. Yeah. Yeah. Then it can go. Can it go on Mondays then? Yep. And then if you can't decide by that, then the following, then it would go on for the resolution. Because that's a resolution that is an action. See, that's a thing. That's a thing I was going to discuss. Oh, and I just wanted I wanted to make sure that that was taken care of. Who was going and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. What are the rates? Two ninety-two. Okay. Yeah, but why wouldn't you get the Times Square View room? It's town money. It's three seventy-two. <laughs> oh, turn that video off. I could do that too. Hey, I bought the theater one year. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <geez. laughs> Holy man. Oh. I want everything to save the town of Boston. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we move to executive session? Okay. Yeah. All right, I will make the motion. Second.